Hello, everybody, and welcome to Portland 360. Make noise like you're an audience and stuff. Very good. My name's Kevin. I am your host. Um, and, you know, it's another rainy night in, in the City of Roses. And, uh, you know, the air in the room here is kind of hanging like, uh, well, like something's dead. So, <laughs> eat your enthusiasm. This morning I, uh, I got up and I started working on my screenplay, which I've been doing for the last 30 years. And, um, and it's getting good, really, really good. Uh, the, uh, it, it, it's, a, it's, it's a heartwarming story about a clown private detective and his sidekick, which is a guy in an iron lung. And they, uh, they travel the world fighting crime. And, uh, and uh, I just got, you know, I, I just come up with the theme song for it, which was just delighting me to absolutely no end. And the theme song kind of goes like this. Clown man and the man in the iron lung. He was the greatest telekinetic the world had ever seen until he contracted emphysema from smoking like a fiend. Now he's broke the clown man out of jail. They're hot on criminals' evil trail. Clown man's will's like an iron rail, and you know that they will not fail. Clown man and the man in the iron lung. Pretty good, huh? Pretty good. Okay. And so I'm, I'm thrilled with this. I'm like, okay, now we've got a show. I've got the intro song. It's good. And so that's when I hear a knock at the door. And I turn. And I, and I look through the door, but I don't see anybody at first because I don't look down low enough. And then when I do, I notice him. And there he is. Manuel Rodriguez. Human cannonball for the Baileys and Cream Barnum and Bastard Circus. <laughs> and I owe him child support money. It's a long story, uh, but I don't have it, and I'm thinking, well, I'm not giving Manny any money tonight anyway, so I pull out Beulah, which is a clown red 44 Magnum, beautiful piece, and, I, and through the door, I blow him away, ba bam bam and you know, I go to the door, and I look at him, and he's a small man, and I think to myself, man, this guy looks like a little boy, except he's bald and dead. <laughs> And it was at that point that I smelled her perfume as it wafted through the room, and there I saw her, Miss Terwilliger. All those curves. <laughs> she was built like a fat man's plate at a one-time through smorgasbord, just stacked. She had, she had volumes. That, I mean, she had a balcony you could do a Vita from. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> And uh, I loved her, and, and, and she was pointing a gun at yours truly, and I, and I turned around and I said, what's up? And she shoots me, and I, and I fall, and my world turns to the head of a pin, whatever that means, and as I start seeing my life fly before my eyes, I'm falling to the ground, all I can think of, all I can think of is that intro song to the clown man. <laughs> oh, man and the man in the iron lung. And I died. And I got up a little bit later, made some coffee, and I was okay. So, uh, <laughs> glad to be here tonight. So happy to have a little bit of an audience in here. It's so good to see all of you. Uh, this is uh, Portland 360, and uh, during this show, I'd like to bring out comics from the Northwest region uh, to do a little of their comedy for you in front of this uh, YouTube audience. <laughs> all 12 or... 14 of you that will watch this. Um, and we've got some great comics in here tonight. Uh, uh, one of my long, old-time friends is in the house tonight. So glad to have him. Tristan Spillman is in the house tonight. Yay! And the crowd goes fantastic. Uh, sitting next to him, right next to him, is Milan Patel, who will be coming up, finishing the show tonight. So again, round of applause. Even yeah, Milan is... Applauding for his own self, right there. Very, very good. Nice to have you. Um, uh, I'd like to start off uh, uh, the show uh, with uh, a bit, a song that um, uh, I, I realized early on that these two things work beautifully together. And I, it, it's an old reference, so I hope it works on you guys. But um, uh, it starts off like this. Just sit right back and you hear a tale, a tale of a fateful trip. It started from this tropic port aboard this tiny ship. 
The mate was a mighty sailing man, a skipper brave and sure. Five passengers set sail that day for a three-hour tour. Yippee-i-yay! <laughs> Yippee-i-oh! Here's the weird part. Gilligan's Island in the sky. The weather started getting rough. The tiny ship was tossed. If not for the courage of the fearless crew, the minnow would be lost. The ship's aground on the shore of this uncharted desert isle with Gilligan, the skipper, too. And a coconut-powered car. <laughs> Yippee-i-yay! Everybody, come on. Yippee-i-oh! Gilligan's Island in the sky. There you go. I'm full of good ideas, aren't I? Excellent. So nice to have you. I'm going to bring our first comic to the stage. He is Tristan Spillman. Please applaud here. He is. Oh, all right. Wow. Thanks everybody for making out thing. This just so it feels like a real show and everything. Have a nice round of applause from everyone who came to this participation. Ah, you better clap or I'm gonna talk to you. All right. Who here's crazy? Anybody? Woo! Yeah! All right. Who here actually suffers from a legitimate mental ailment and you're kind of offended when people want to describe their good times with your disability? Yeah, it's kind of rude when you overthink about it, isn't it? I hear it all the time, like, oh man, I got all crazy last weekend. I want to be like, oh really? Just for the two days then, huh? <laughs> isn't that fucking convenient? I live here! <laughs> Just ruining the property values, you damn howling madmen. It's a Hawaii joke. Alright, so I've been trying to let things go, trying to get, get, get crazy like I used to, I'm trying to let things go. Like when people do that thing that drives everybody crazy, you know, when they say the word literally, and you know absolutely, definitively, that they mean the word figuratively, right? I decided I'm going to go ahead and let that go. But in my vengeance now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just start misusing the word figuratively, right? Right? That's, 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 that's just, you know, like, oh my gosh, it is so cold in here. Figuratively. <laughs> Though it actually is quite warm, the temperature, the ambiance is different and aloof. I meant to say distant and aloof, but that's okay. All right. Ruin that joke. That's okay. We'll keep rolling. <laughs> keep rolling with the hilarity. All right. So, uh, yeah, speaking of temperature, this sweater is making me hot. Figuratively. <laughs> All right. Well, speaking of stripping, actually, the very first time I ever met Kevin, it was, a, it was a strip club. It actually wasn't a strip club, it was actually a bar called Devil's Point that turned into a strip club. You guys been there? Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's a fun place if you've never been there. But uh, yeah, they, they actually had a strip night on uh, every Wednesday. It became a big thing. They graduated to the weekend. It became the whole weekend, which is nothing but strippers. That made Wednesday available for, of course, comedy, right? Smooth transition. They just brought us right in there. The inaugural night, though, however, there was actually ladies of the evening there to dance, right? And there were still gentlemen there to see the ladies, and we didn't want to interfere with their, you know, career. But we also had a comedy audience there, and we were comedians. So I brainstormed with Kevin, and we come up with the idea of we're going to bring back burlesque. Right? Vaudeville or something like that. We're going to do stripper comedian, stripper comedian, right? And the elegant way we're going to do this is the strippers go on for two songs, Comedians go on for five minutes, and our elegant solution is an egg timer. So we got that going on in the background the whole time. <laughs> and it's great. I'm up there, I'm like checking off all the stuff off the, uh, you know, the bucket list, you know. I got Weirdo Beardo with a boner in the corner. Never going to get that again, or I hope, right? <laughs> Lady who was just naked getting clothed during my set, right? <laughs> Check that off the list. Not going to happen again. So I actually get close to wrapping up my time, right? But I accidentally launch into one of my longer routines. The timer goes off, ding, right? So I just use that as like a tag, because I'm going to come back. I'm like, hey, stick around. You guys can be able to hear the end of that joke later on. That's when I received my finest compliment in comedy. Because right up front, one of the gentlemen, you know he was a gentleman because he was wearing sweatpants. <laughs> he looks at me just about ready to finish, and he looks at me and he goes, no, you finished that joke. <laughs> Throws me a dollar, right? <laughs> Makes you feel pretty, huh? So it makes you feel pretty. 
So uh, here's that story I was going to tell that, that, that fateful evening. And I always, I, I'm glad that I'm able to tell this here because I've always kind of pictured it in my head as like a, like a short film or something, even though it actually is a true story. It's a true story. Here's the setting. I'm walking home. I'm walking, right? It's nice, nice summer evening, right? Beautiful. It's like 2, 2 a.m., right? I'm walking like this. Yeah, because I think knee injuries are cool, right? No, actually, I'm walking like this because I'm really drunk, right? Super drunk, right? I, I had to walk home because the missus and the kids, they took the collar and drove away, right? Oh, for a fun vacation, though. It was nice, right? I had to give up my seat for Grandma. I was being the hero here. I'm a generous benefactor. I'm excited. That evening, instead of going uh, to, the sh to the vacation, I went and did professional comedy, what I love doing the most. And I did well that evening. They paid me in money, if you can imagine such a thing. And in free beer, of course. Right? So I'm up to my nipples. And why wouldn't you get shitty? Right? I'm super drunk. Walking home. I'm excited because everything's taken care of. The evening's perfect. Got all the T's crossed and dotted eyes except for the cats. Oh, I forgot about the cats. I hadn't been home in like 12 hours. Actually, come to think about it, I hadn't been home in like 18 hours. The cats come meet me out in protest like six blocks away from my house, just just jawing at me. We have this thing, me and the cat, whenever they're they're hungry, they meow at me. I'm pretty, it's pretty good standard operating procedure with a cat and a cat owner, right? My cat's really dedicated, though. She will not stop, just full on a solid wall of meows. Until you talk to her. That chills her out for a bit, so I have a little bit of fun with it. Might as well, you know, it's like, I don't think I'm voting libertarian this year. <laughs> Yes, he seems like he'd be a cool guy to party with. That's kind of the problem, right? You know, I'm not going that direction. Unless, of course, I make eye contact with the cat, and then I actually mention the word cat food, like, you want cat food, don't you? That's when she freaks out. She's like, ah, she's clawing at the air, like, yes, you dumbass. That's what I've been getting at for the last half hour. So I got that going on with me. I'm walking. I got six blocks, so I might as well have fun with it, right? Cat's like, Rawr. I'm like, just the very fact that you want me to sign up for the program makes it sound like a pyramid scheme, right? Right? That's why I noticed some other guys clocking me, watching the whole time, right? He wants the freak show, right? He crosses the street to come over and see what's going on. That was his bad. He didn't have to. He came to the weirdness, right? So I'm walking along, and he tells me warningly, he's like, Hey, buddy, you better watch out if you got a little uh, fellow there talking to you. That's when I turn around to him and go, yeah, the cats in this neighborhood are always fucking talking to me. Just keep walking. Silence. So the guy finally braves up. He looks over at me and he's like, You don't think that the cats actually talk to you, do you? Know? Yeah. And that's when I got him. I was like, Ah, I got him now, right? So, really overly defensively, I look over at him and be like, No! Cats can't talk! And just fall back into awkward silence. Right now the cat's full spread, just <laughs> And now I'm like defensively like, oh god, not now. Trying to laugh it off with the guy. <laughs> this was a kitty. This is a cat. They're crazy. <laughs> I'm not gonna ask him that. <laughs> I'm not gonna ask him that. <laughs> he doesn't have any. <laughs> I'm not gonna ask him that. Finally the guy breaks down, he's like, so what's the cat saying? I was like, oh, God, finally, I guess I will, whatever, why not? Do you have any cat food? Right, that's when the cat goes, Rawr! I'm like, all right, fine. Not necessarily cat food, but food to which a cat might eat, right? I'm staring at him pensively, right? Cat's staring at him, right? He looks down at the cat, it's perfect, pats his pockets for effect. Like, I'm sorry, buddy. I, I, no mas, Mr. Gatto, you know? <laughs> like we walk on, I'm like, I didn't know you spoke Spanish, I say to the cat, right? Now the guy's, he's holding back a little bit. He's falling back. Yeah, that makes sense, right? Except for I'm about ready to go home anyway. I, like, I start heading up towards the stairs, going up towards my house. I say over my shoulder as I'm heading up, I'm like, well, it's been a lovely walk with you, but I think I'm going to go ahead and head on home. Unless you want to come on up and grab something to eat. He's like, uh, no, no thanks. That's when I look at him and go, I was talking to the cat, you weirdo. <laughs> cat jumps up there, looks at him like, Rawr! I'm like, yeah, he is. And we both walk upstairs. <laughs> and that's a story. All right, thank you. Yeah. Kevin? Very nice. Once again, Tristan Spillman, everyone. Yeah. Yeah,
reminds me a couple things. Uh, I'm old enough to remember uh, uh, when, instead of having voicemail, we, we had phone answering machines. Remember? Oh yeah. Remember them? And they were so cool to make your own message for them. <laughs> And um, I had a cat that anytime you touched it, it would just make this horrible yeah! noise. And so I, I did a recorded message for myself, which was basically me picking up the cat and saying, I'm sorry, I can't come to the phone right now. I bought a home neutering kit at Costco, and I can't, can't quite make it to the phone right now. So it, yeah, yeah I mean, it's a lot of rules, a lot of questions. Um, yeah, Tristan mentioned uh, uh, Dell's point. And uh, yeah, we did that show forever, and many times doing that show with only Tristan being the only comic that showed up to do the show. Many times he showed up like an hour to the show, so I would be on stage for an hour waiting, and he would get in the room, and up next, Tristan, he's on, and here he'd be right on stage. Um, but you know what? I, I had a, a great, some great experiences in there, especially because it was a half stripper, half comedy club, and. Um, you know, you have not lived until you have seen a stripper fight. I'm telling you, <laughs> it's the best thing ever. So I, this is tr another true story. I'm, I'm closing the show in there, and the uh, DJ is, is not showing up for the dancers that are coming on after the comedy show. That's how we eventually got to with that show, the, com the dancers coming on after. Well, uh, the, the club owner says, Kevin, can you play music for the dancers while, until this... DJ shows up, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, sure. Um, you pay me, so yeah. And, uh, and so I'm playing music for the, uh, the strippers, and the, the other DJ does not show up. And during the, the night, I'm there late into the evening at this point, and I'm drunk, because that was back in those days. <laughs> and um, one of the girls, we hear this huge commotion in the back room, just banging and throwing. And, and one girl comes out around the front of the stage where we're waiting for her to come out and dance. No, she comes straight over to me and goes, Kevin, you need to come back here right now. I'm like, okay. So I go back into the back room and we open up the back room. Two women, completely stark naked, fighting hard. <laughs> I mean, fighting, like throwing hard punches at each other. One girl picks up the other girl, throws her against the wall. The wall's not real, so it kind of falls <laughs> in. These canisters fall over, and the girl, the girl that's not fighting turns to me and goes, do something, you gotta do something. I'm like, no, there's nothing I can do. What am I gonna, just stop. Please, just stop fighting, please. What are they fighting over? Yep, you guessed it, cocaine. <laughs> Um, I'm gonna bring our next comic to the stage. He is Milan Patel. Please applaud. Here he is. Thank you, Kevin Michael Moore, everybody. A young son of a gun. That's what we needed. Uh, we had 360 camera for to go back into Kevin's memories and just uh, watch that moment again. Watch two. Na we need. That's what we need here. We need two naked surfers fighting on the stage. And then pan over, and then you, you scroll over to Kevin, and he's just cowering in the corner. <laughs> and then there's a guy next to him, like, are you going to do something? And he's just like, I gotta go. I just here for comedy. It's good to be here, man. It's good to be here doing uh, stuff for all you guys. Gonna make eye contact with everyone here. <laughs> because that's what Kevin told me. Kevin, uh, he uh, reached out to me on Craigslist. He said, you need a young, hot boy. And, uh, <laughs> Email me, he said we got a 360 cam, and then we're gonna do VR porn. <laughs> That's not how you put it, you said comedy show. I, like, I think I know what this is. <laughs> Walk upstairs into a apartment, I think, and uh what am I gonna have sex? <laughs> and I don't want to, but I'm a man of my word. <laughs> I'm a man of my word. I'll do it. Um we were talking about like shitty kids, and uh, I was just thinking, we were talking about shitty kids earlier before this started, and uh, I was saying like I have been telling people like I am tired of uh, like uh, shitty like cool moms in Portland. I'm like tired of like cool moms, like uh, you know like parenting while wearing like a big white brimmed hat. Like I don't you know, you know I mean? and it's not a gardening hat. It's like leather and shit. It's like why are you wearing that? But, uh, I saw I saw like this cool mom. This was a, like a couple months ago, but I saw this mom. She was like a cool mom, and she was wearing like, a big hat, and I could tell 
she was really shitty at her job. So because, <laughs> just because I know, because she was leaning, she was like leaning, she was doing this lean, your hips out, and she was kind of like get, getting. First of all, I don't know why you have to do that if you're yelling at your kid. You can just get. I'm not. My mom never did that to me. So that's. <laughs> And my mom's a pretty good mom, but she never, like, put her hips out and, like, did this to me. Uh, she was very, like, she just stood up and then said what she wanted to say, because she was an adult. But, uh, this woman was not. This woman was wearing adult clothes, and she was, this is how I knew she was bad. She was looking at her son, she was like, Skylar? 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 Okay. No? Get, don't go lower, because I'll go lower, too. I can go lower, too. Skylar? We love you, Okay. We love you. Skylar, listen, we love you. She said it like four times. We love you, okay? But you need to stop touching on people on the butt, okay? And then Skylar was like, eh, and then he just like ran around like the corner and uh, she just like chased after him, her hat fell off and uh, it's a bad kid, right? The kid's gonna suck. The kid's gonna be a piece of shit. Yeah, should have pushed him, pushed him. I should have pushed him, but I was watching from my car. But I should have kidnapped him. If I should have gone on my car, <laughs> he ran around the corner and I picked him up. I'm like, you're mine now, okay? I'm going to raise you as my own. Because <laughs> your mom's not doing a great job. And uh, that kid's going to suck. There's no boundaries, you know? You're just touching people on the butt, even though they say no. And uh, he's never going to be reprimanded. He's going to be a bad kid. That's why Coney turned out so bad. You guys remember Coney? <laughs> like six years ago? Remember Coney from the internet? 2012. Coney 2012. You remember that? He was starting child armies in the Congo or something like that? The evil man, but I think that's why he turned out so bad. Because no one ever told him no. Coney, no, you cannot start a child army. <laughs> Fuck you, Mom, I'm gonna do what I want. You know. That's why that happened. Um yeah, I don't know. I, uh, I'm young. I'm younger than everyone in this room right now. But older than the people watching this on YouTube. Isn't that weird? Yeah, it's probably like a 10-year-old who uh, got lost in a feed. <laughs> He's watching Minecraft videos. And he's like, what's this? And he's like, Mom, what is uh, VR porn? <laughs> Dude. I heard VR porn is like really good though. I heard it's like too good. Like you'll like it'll ruin your life is what I heard. But uh, I won't really want to get a VR set just for that. <laughs> I heard it's really good. Like it really makes you feel like you're in it, uh, which is cool. But you know, um, which I don't get because like you put your hand out there. It's still, it's still, you're still not there. Like, I get it. It's like VR, so it's like the girl's like, ah! She's like coming at you. She's like, yeah, come here. And you're just like, ah! And you still can't, I don't know. I just don't see. Maybe. Maybe it's good. Uh, but that's sort of the future, man. Reality is changing, and uh, it's going to blow our minds. But I'm tired of people. I'm tired of people trying to blow my mind, though. I am. I don't know if you guys are tired of that, but people are always trying to blow my mind nowadays. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have that, but people like try to blow your mind. They're like, you know, reality is uh, not real. <laughs> that was like going on for six months. It was like, a, or like three months ago. It was like an article that came, like one article. It was like, some scientists, many scientists think reality is not real. And it's like, all right, what am I supposed to do with that? It's like, well, that's as far as I've gotten. I read that article, but, you know. It's like, they don't have any alternate, like, he's like, okay, so what is it? Well, I haven't gotten that far, but just trust me, that part's true. <laughs> also, time is not linear. I hope that blows your mind. That's always, like, a guy that does that. It's like, time, it's not, it's not linear. Which it is, by the way. Time is linear. <laughs> like, it is very linear. If I ask anyone here, like, describe time, it's linear. Like, no one, only assholes describe time as anything but linear. It's like an asshole at a party that walks up. He's like, uh, excuse me, was someone here talking about time? I heard time mentioned? Uh, I know many of you, uh, probably, uh, would probably consider time to be linear. The layman, the idiot, the fool. I've got a little bit of a different uh, take on things, if you just indulge me for a moment. Uh, let me pose a question. Sometimes, 
You're trying to live in the moment, but you keep thinking about what's going to happen uh, next. How would you describe that? And you're just like, I don't know, I guess that's like uh, anxiety or worrying. Well, sure, that's, uh, of course, some may describe it that way, but think about this. Sometimes you're trying to live in the present. You keep thinking about what happened before. How would you describe that? And you're like, uh, it's like memory. Is that? Is that memory? <laughs> well, sure, but obviously you haven't seen the YouTube videos I've seen. <laughs> Anyway, if you need me, I'll be right over here making these women feel uncomfortable. <laughs> Excuse me, ladies, did I hear someone mention time? The... It just goes up to a different group. Um, and those are the guys that write like all the, what do you call it? They like write all the sci-fi movies now. Those are those guys. I like sci-fi, do you guys watch sci-fi movies? Okay, have you guys seen Interstellar? Oh, yeah. Okay. Have you noticed, like, have you seen Arrival? Yes. Okay. You notice? You haven't seen? You haven't seen it? Okay. Spoiler. Have you seen uh, either of those? Interstellar. You saw Interstellar. Well, basically, if you have seen that, that's basically the plot twist at the end of every sci-fi movie. Now they'll be like, "Well, guess what? Time's not linear." So. There you go. I know you thought you knew what was going on, but think again, buddy. Because guess what? What happened before is happening later. What's happening later is happening now. What happened at the beginning of the movie happened twice. And if you think you know what's going to happen next, think again, asshole, because it just happened in the middle of the movie. <laughs> what, are you stupid? You an idiot? That and then uh, people, the other thing that people say to blow your mind is that they'll, they'll be like, uh, uh, what do they say? They like to, they'll tell you that space is infinite. That's like the new thing now. They'll be like, that's like what people have like, like space is uh, infinite, so they used to just say it was like really big, and now it's like infinite, which I don't think is fair. It's, like, it's not even like a real size. <laughs> they, didn't even, they didn't even measure it. They're like, we're gonna we're gonna remeasure. They're like, okay, we came back, we didn't remeasure, but it's infinite. So, which is, uh, I don't actually believe space is infinite. I think I don't think it's that big. I, this is how big I think space is. I think space, I think it's what you can see, and then maybe a little bit more. <laughs> it's, it's not infinite. I'm tired of like these myths. I'm tired of the myths. That that myth and then the other myth is that uh, 90% of the heat you lose from the top of your head. That's not true. There's no way that's true. I don't care. Because people are like now it's like you know myths. They used to be like like led like dude this guy uh, he slayed uh, an army of 10,000 men with. Just, you know, a t-shirt, a sewing needle, and, you know, his ass, or whatever. <laughs> and now, like, every myth you hear is, like, a percentage. Like, you know, 10% uh, of your brain is not used. You need, the 90, you need a pill to unlock the other 90%. But, um, I don't know. Okay, this isn't going well. <laughs> <laughs> it's not on board. It's hard to sell uh, not believing in, like, science, but I don't know. Uh, what was the other thing I was going to talk about you guys about? Oh, I don't know if you guys ever heard this phrase. Uh, I was thinking about this phrase. Have you guys ever heard that phrase, arts and crafts? Yeah, people say like arts and crafts. Which is weird because they, they put two things together. They put together arts and crafts. So they say arts and crafts together. Which is weird because they're two separate things. Like I don't know if you guys have ever seen art before, but it's pretty good. Uh, <laughs> art's actually really good. Okay, when it's good, it's good. I gotta say, and uh, you know, it can you know, art can like change your life. It can like make you know, you can like look at it and it changes everything you thought about what was like happened, like real, and it changes it. It's crazy. It can bring you to tears. Uh, crafts, on the other hand, don't seem to have the same impact on people. <laughs> they don't seem to. They don't seem to pack the same kind of punch. But people say arts and crafts. By the way, if you say you're gonna go to do arts and crafts. Everyone knows you're gonna go do crafts. Like, <laughs> no one's gonna be like, "Holy shit, dude! I didn't know you were an artist. That's crazy. How long have you been doing that?" It's like, no, you know, you're, you're gonna go. Uh... That's why there's like art museums, but there's no arts and crafts museums. <laughs> you know, that would be weird to go on a tour and be like, "Well, as you can see behind me, we have a uh, Pablo Picasso, La Guernica, is a colossal masterpiece, a mural that Picasso made." Uh, to commemorate and to uh, ex explain the tragedy and chaos of the bombing of Guernica and the Spanish Civil War. And as you can see on the faces of the people and the dying... In oh, what's that next to it? Oh, uh, it's a Thanksgiving turkey traced out of a hand. <laughs> yeah, I mean, 
<laughs> yeah, as you can see, this one has a little pilgrim hat on it. Uh, <laughs> anyway, right this way to the Beelis de Milo and uh, a popsicle and glue exhibit right there. <laughs> you know, I looked it up actually. There is actually an uh, arts and crafts museum that does exist, and of all places, Portland, Oregon. Where we live. <laughs> yeah, can you believe it? Uh, it's true, it actually does exist, but I looked it up on Google Maps, and uh, I am very happy to say that it is permanently closed. <laughs> it, it's, it says it on Google Maps, it says permanent. Do you know what permanent means? It means it's not coming back. <laughs> That's what permanent means. It's like, this obviously will never come back. This is permanently closed when I'm bringing this one back. Um, You know, as a, like, okay, uh, birds, like, some things are scary, like, okay. So I feel like some things when they're outside are good, and then sometimes when they're inside, I don't like it. Like, birds, I like when they're outside. Like, uh, you know, I like seeing them on, like, a, a line, and they're all lined up together. There's, like, five of them. Or I like seeing them in, like, a bird bath, and they're drinking water. Or, like, a hummingbird, you know? I like birds when they're outside. Uh... But birds when they're inside is one of my top five fears. <laughs> like, can you imagine if there's a bird loose in the studio right now? <laughs> this, is, this is so scary. Like any bird, not even like, you know. Like I got like when you're at the airport and there's like a bird in and you're like, what? Is that a bird? There could be like unattended luggage like right next to you and you're like, is someone gonna take care of that bird? Uh, help? Please help. <laughs> there's a, sir, there's a bird up here. Uh, what are you guys' ethnicities? <laughs> what are you? Oh, you're white? Ridiculously pale. <laughs> yeah, you're very white. Suburban. Huh? <laughs> suburban. Oh, man, I'm suburban, dude. You don't, even sh you don't shit about suburban. I'm from Vancouver, Washington, by the way. Yeah, this is how you guys Sicilian. Rock. Are you Sicilian? Yeah. Holy shit, dude. Hell uh, yeah, bro. That's right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Irish. Irish. Sic uh, Sicilian, that's like, um, you guys are you're supposed to be darker then. It's kind of dark, right? Yeah. Okay, if you're watching this, pan over to this man. <laughs> now, open another tab in Google Chrome, okay? And then, <laughs> and then Google Sicilian. <laughs> and, see, and, and now compare. Now, pan over to me, and do I look more like the picture, or does he? That's what you should do. I guarantee you I look more Sicilian. No, I don't know. I don't know how Sicilian people. I went, I've never been to Sicily, but that's crazy. Are you 100%? Oh, damn. You proud? Sicilians are proud, right? Super proud. Damn, that's crazy. What's the other one, one quarter? Uh, don't know. British, oh. probably. English. It's just like white? Yeah. Okay, that's cool. <laughs> I was at a comedy show once, and there's like a, I was like, are there any interracial? I was like dating a, a white, I was just like, you know, whatever, I just want to know. Are there any interracial couples? That's what I said at that show. And then I like no one clapped. And I looked and there was like a really brown girl next to a white dude. I was like, well, I'm just looking right at you. <laughs> and then she was like, uh, I'm Sicilian. I'm like, oh, sorry. I didn't mean to. <laughs> Excuse me. I didn't mean to. I don't know. I'm Indian. Um, and uh, I'm uh, proud, I guess. Yeah, I'm proud. Just, I'm proud to be Indian. I'm very proud. Um, and that's all I'm going to say about that. I, uh, <laughs> I'm suburban, man. I live in uh, Vancouver, Wa I moved back home. I, I'm from Vancouver, Washington. If you don't know where that is, it's like a suburb outside of Portland. Uh, and I moved back to my hometown two years ago. And I really, I really thought like I'd move back and I'd be like, I always wanted to be like the hometown boy, you know? I always wanted to be like the hometown boy. And uh, I always thought that'd be cool, you know? The hometown boy knows everybody. He like walks to the town square and he's like, hey, what's up? What's like he knows everybody, you know? He's like walking through, he's like, Hey, what's up, Mikey? How you doing? You doing MMA? You looking big? You working out? I'm gonna, oh, 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 I'm gonna fight you next week. Go throw some punches. Bah. <laughs> Melissa! Hey, how you doing? How's your sister doing? Hey, hey, you gonna let me take you out next week? You gonna let me take you out? Oh, I'm being, I'm being a dick. You being a bitch. <laughs> Whoa, I'm kidding. She's like my sister. I love her. <laughs> Oh, hello, Mrs. Johnson. I didn't see you crouching there. <laughs> you almost scared me. You gonna make me one of your famous Mary and Berry pies this week? 
What do you mean I fell on you for the last one? Ah, you crazy. I'll get you next week. <laughs> That's what I want to be. Uh, and then, I really did. I want to be like the hometown. Not like that, but I want to be a hometown boy. So, I went through downtown Vancouver one day. I was walking through the park in downtown. And I really wanted to be, like, this is a real, this is not a joke, like, this is something I want. So, I probably shouldn't have done this, but I saw some, like, kids skateboarding, and, uh, I went up to them, and, uh, I, uh, I went up to them, and I went up to one of the kids, he's, like, 10 years old, and, uh, I shouldn't have done this, but I, I was like, hey, kid, do you know any tricks? And uh, I swear this is what he said to me, he was like, uh, yeah, bro, uh, I'm not sexually active yet. And I was like, oh, shit. And I, <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. this is a mistake. I got to get away. <laughs> I grabbed him. And I was like, I'm trying to be the hometown boy. All right? Don't tell your mom. All right, thanks, guys. I didn't mean to go that long, but thank you guys. All right. All right, don't. Thank you. Thank you. One more time, Mila Patel. Everybody clap. in Gresham, which is, is also way back. And I always thought, you know, if we're going to call Vancouver the Couve, then we got to call Gresham the Sham. <laughs> what do you think, huh? Yeah. You're bringing up art museums. I did a, I did a show in uh, uh, Olympia. N bragging. Super bragging right there. Uh, in Olympia, next to the uh, state capitol, honest to God, there is a hands-on children's museum. <laughs> Can you? Is that good? Is that good or what? Right? Right next. Yeah, I'm like, change the name. Just a little bit. Change the name. It's just, uh, I don't know what we were thinking. It seemed right at the time. And what's really bad? Big hand prints on the side of the building. Like adult hand prints. Not children's hand prints, adult hand prints on the side of the building. I'm like, okay. Uh, well, this has been a super amount of fun, as it always is. I'd like to thank Bodhi for putting this, helping us put this together. Um, we're going to be back each and every Sunday, uh, or each and every other Sunday. And uh, are we need are we need to fill more time? Is that what you're giving me? No, the, no, you're no, giving no, me, no, 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 we're no, done. We're good. Okay, we're good. All right. Uh, I'd like to thank um, you guys personally for coming out to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, come out and see The Wizard of Oz, which I'm working on forever right now. Um, I, I learned that the, uh, the moral to Wizard of Oz is this. Don't bring your dog to school. Yeah. Right? <laughs> she doesn't bring the dog to school. The old lady doesn't get mad. Nothing bad happens. And what parents let their kids go to school with the fucking dog? <laughs> right? Did we learn nothing from little Bo Peep? <laughs> And with that, I'd like to thank you all for coming out. Thank you so much. Stay dry. And happy holidays, everybody. It is the time.